Thing. Woo! Fourth of July. Hmm. And of course, those of us in the United States, it's a very, very special, significant day today. Um, and tonight, we're going to do something a little bit different. You know, throughout the Bible, and actually throughout in life general, they've always been subject of threats. If it's a TV show, it's either Three's a crowd or Three's company. Or my three sons, for your throwbacks out there. In English classes, growing up in elementary school, we learn about one of three things when it comes to describing. We learn about the person, place, or thing. Those would be one of the classifications of nouns. Person, place, or thing. And later got upgraded to person, place, thing, or idea. When it comes to God, we know about God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, if you like that, like to pray it that way. Tonight, as we about to go inside the world infamous rest of the church, and our senior lead pastor, Brian Adams, is standing by. And by the way, pastor, we still have you in prayer, and you know God's got you, by the way. As we go inside, the world lived from Miss Rest Lake Church and our senior lead pastor Brian Alves is sitting by. Tonight, we're going to learn, originally this was titled, The Three Ps. But it got modified to, and of course, those three Ps that we're going to discuss tonight being person, problem, and scripture. We go for the three Ps. They end up getting upgraded to tonight's subject, which is known as the three major characters. You're gonna need to take notes on this one, y'all. It is gonna be really good. Pastor, I'm already ready for it. Let's rock and roll. Happy fourth to you, my friend. Let's roll. Let's go resonate. So we're going to talk about the three main characters, and when we first get there, we're going to talk about a story, and I'm going to help you out a little bit. But if you guys want to, you can go to Luke chapter 13, uh, verses 11 and 12, so we're going to read on, and we want you to kind of get there. And I want to talk about this story, but we're going to kind of twist it so you can understand what's going on, and that will help you, okay? story starts like this, verse 11 says, And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Now, let's talk about this. The spirit of infirmity would be, it, it, we're, we're not getting so much that it's demon possession, a spirit of infirmity, she had a sickness. She had something that done something to her physically, okay? 
And it was, and she was bent over and could in no way rise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, it was a but when. Yep. Listen, when Jesus sees you, he can fix whatever circumstance you're in. Come on, son. Right. He called to her, and he said to her, now I want you to get this, woman, you are loose from your affirmities. And that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about this for a second, and I'm going to build up a little bit, but I want to paint this picture. We know that this woman's had this issue, this affirmity. She's had it for 18 years. So if you begin to study, this tells us that she was probably uh, probably around, some scholars think that she might have been around a teenager or so forth when it finally hit her. But this affirmity took over so rapidly that within 18 years she couldn't raise herself up. So I want to demonstrate this so you can kind of understand some things so it'll hit home. So one day, let's say I'm the woman. So one day I'm normal. And then all of a sudden, something starts to happen. And then without realizing it, it gets where I can't straighten it up. Yeah. I blow it off. I don't think it's a big issue. <coughs> it's just a little bit of an ache. It's just a little bit of a pain. Then the next thing you know, I'm starting to get to one side and things are starting to get out of line. My life is out of adjustment. Mm -hmm. And she starts to move. She starts to get. The next thing you know... She's now kind of humped over. By this time, and I'll show this when we start studying, but this time, she's done everything she can to get better. In fact, I'll go back one more verse, please. In fact, you find out that she says that she done everything that she could, and I'll repeat this in a minute, everything she could to raise herself up. So in other words, she's done all the self-medication that she could do to get her out of the circumstance. Yeah. That makes sense. She probably went to a couple of doctors. It don't say she went to a priest. But it says that she's done all she could do and in no way raise herself up. In other words, she couldn't fix herself. Mm. Just like most of us can't fix ourselves from our habits, our addictions, and our problems that we are facing. But this has been going so long that she couldn't fix herself. Now she is bent and to the point that she can't do nothing. And she's just hungry. She's not attractive no more. We don't know who she ever was, but let's just give her the benefit of the doubt. She went from being pretty and guys and people looking at her in town thinking she was fair and pretty and good to all of a sudden now... She's the scary one in the corner that's walking Polly Hunt. And now she's getting the attention, you all see what I'm doing, mm -hmm. for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Mm. For 18 years. That's a long time, y'all. Yeah. But here's the catch that we need to get on that's really quick. And we need to understand something. I'm going to jump ahead so you stay with me, right? So what's happening in our lives, we have got to a spot with a dilemma that something's happened to us. It could be an addiction. It could be an abuse. It could be a number of things. Something that's happened to us that we thought we had under control wasn't no big deal. And now all of a sudden we have hunkered yeah. over and we're handicapped. Now you're going to tell me, hey, I'm physically fine. What about mentally? Right. Oh. Maybe we started with our addiction, it was just one or two, and we can handle it, and maybe go get some at the wall, and it's no big deal, just a bump here and a quarter here, and it went from a quarter there to an eight ball to an ounce to, I ain't sharing with nobody, anybody, come on somebody, you know what I'm talking about, like you don't. Right, or alcohol, one drink, two drinks, three drinks. Or maybe it's a young person, or you're a person that always wanted to feel love, and you went from one guy or one girl to another one and to another one, and you keep looking for that one true love, but what's happened is now you're carrying all that luggage that in your relationships you're even bent over. Yeah. Oh. That's good. And even with your drug addiction and your alcohol addiction, or whatever we face in this house, come on, everybody's got something. Yeah. Yes. Right? What's happened now is we didn't mean for it to be a handicap, but now it's affected how we have relationships with our kids, our parents, the people we like, our friends that were always behind us now ain't behind us, and our mind ain't right because everyone's out to get us. Yeah. So this way back a little bit. Come on. We all, we all been there. I've been there. And now what's happened is 
Physically, we might not be handicapped, but spiritually, mm -hmm. oh! Yeah. And then we were like, oh man, what's going on? How did I get myself to this spot? What could I do to change this? Why am I crippled? And why am I handicapped? And what's happened to me? And for all honest, it's probably been close to many, many years, if not 18. Yeah. Oh. Years of years of this. I started when I was 10, randomly getting high when my brother would leave me somewhere. I slipped from his back. And then from 10 to 12, to do the meth every once in a while to every other weekend to carry my own bag my own stuff to supply it. I didn't realize it the whole time I was handicapped. Yeah. Mm. So picture this. Know this, this means that this woman's dilemma, that's what we're going to call it, right? Right. Is her own. We really can't blame it on someone else. She can't say, well, I'm crippled like this because it comes from my mom and dad. Because the Bible tells us, we were here a couple Wednesdays ago, we taught that it said the, the disciples went up to Jesus and said, is this child this way because of his mom and dad? And he said, no. So that tells us that when we like to blame things for other reasons, and the church really likes to use generational curse nowadays, what we have found out is that it's not a generational curse. Yeah. It's just flat out a choice that we have made. Mm. We have made the choice to be where we are. Yeah. So this means if her dilemma, she can't blame it on her mom and dad, and she can't blame it on genetics like we'd like to. We we can just see that something was fine for years, and now all of a sudden something's happened to her. And if we're honest with ourselves and out, we've been fine for years, but now all of a sudden we find ourselves in a spot that's got us up against the corner, and we don't know how to react. And no matter how we respond to people, they just look at us like we're the crippled ones in the corner. Yeah. Oh, Are you come good? on. Okay. So we know that's her dilemma. Now listen, just to make this fun so you don't get mad at me, but we all know someone that might be this way. We might know that person. We might know someone, you know, down, you know, down the street or whatever. We might know that. And if we're going to be honest, most of us can honestly say that it might be us. But we, you, you know what I'm saying, right? But there's one thing here that's amazing in this story. In two chapters or in two verses, something's amazing, and this is why I hang on to this one so much. In this two verses, there's three major characters in this story. Okay. Three. Right? So I want you to get this. In your life, where you are, what got you here, and what you're going through at this moment, there are three major characters. Okay. You can't add to it. There's just three. You ready? Go ahead. Write yeah. this down. This will help you. Character number one is the person. It's her. Character number one in your life will be you. Okay. It's you. The second main character of this problem is most people don't realize is the problem. Oh. The character is the person. The next character is how it's changing her that for 18 years it's been forming her to something that she didn't want to be. Yeah. And okay. if we're honest with ourselves and I, we got some sin in our lives and we've done some things that has formed us into a person we did not want to be. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. That's right. We didn't want to be this way. We never meant for nothing to get this far out of hand. I can admit. Amen. <laughs> people are coming from where we come from. People ask that a lot of times. What made you think? I, I didn't plan on it. Yeah. And they all look at us like, oh, how'd you not plan on it? <laughs> uh, well, I just didn't plan on it. <laughs> never seen it going south. Did anybody see it going south? No. Yes. We know the consequences. We know what's going to happen. But did it stop you from doing it? Because <laughs> no. we never believed it could be us. Yeah. We always thought we had a grip on it. Oh. Right? All right? Some of you shake your heads. You're better than the rest of us. Come on. Yeah. I ain't going to say you're lying. I ain't, I ain't in your shoes. Me, with my addiction, I never had a grip. I thought I did. You never had a grip. Mm. Right? So check this out. The third thing would be the prescription. Okay. The most important thing. Yeah. Mm. So it's the three P's, is what we call it ministry. See, it's important to remember that every person has a problem, and remember that every person will have a problem. Okay. It happens. Yeah. But more importantly, you need to realize for every problem, God has a prescription. Yes. yes. 
You've got to realize that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter how crooked you are, no matter how crazy your mind is, and how far out whack you think you are, God's like, you know what? i got the fix for you. I can change your life instantly. Yeah. Mm. And you always got to remember that. Yep. Because no matter what you're going through, it affects you. And what's affecting you is the problem. And the only one that can fix the problem is God's prescription. Yep. So let's talk about this person. Let's really get into her mindset. Y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Think about this. This poor woman has probably done everything she can to be well. Mm. She's probably self-medicated. Come on. Okay. She's probably done everything she can. But for 18 years, right, something has been eating her up. Something just keeps making it worse. Something just keeps on happening. Now I want you to get this. I want you to get this close. For whatever happened in your past, there's a greater prescription for your future. Amen. Yes. And that's the key to this. And I want to give you one scripture to remember. You ready? If God can heal her, we're fixing to get to that. Go to my second verse in that. If God can heal her, you got to remember Hebrews 13, 18. Don't go there. Stay where you're at. Hebrews 13, 18. Right? Jesus Christ is the same what? Yesterday. Yesterday, today, today and, and forever. So that means that no matter I'm the person, I'm going to have a problem, there's always a prescription. Yes. And it's never going to run out. Right. Yeah. That's it's good. Never, it, it don't matter if the problems change or what's happened, God's got me a way out. Yes. It don't matter if I keep falling. It don't matter if I keep making mistakes. As long as my heart's right and I'm trying to live right, God's like, I got you fixed. I got you a prescription. I got you a way out of this. Mm. Now, for you that think you've been doing it too long, because that's what I thought, she's been this way for 18 years. Yeah. And God fixes it like that. You're going to say, is it going to be fixed that way? Can I really be honest? Can I be honest with that? It'll be as fixed as fast as you allow God to fix it. That's right. Right. We do this face. Oh my God, watch what I do. We're going to do anyway. We're on TV. We do this silly faith thing that, oh, it's faith. It, it takes time. It's going to take you a journey. Stop that. Amen. The quicker you believe and you give it all to God, the faster it'll happen. Yeah. Boom. And you know what? You know why it happened instantly with her? She was tired of being crippled for 18 years. She was tired of being handicapped for 18 years. Yeah. Man, I know God, for 23 years plus, was just totally, man, I'll take it home, sir. For 23 years plus, addicted to about everything you could think of. Shot up with needles. At the age of around 10 years old, uh, had elders, and, and literally people that went to church had elders in them, he had taken them and other kids, making them have sex. And that messed with him mentally. And then he grew up in this, and he, he was just really confused about church. He went back because he grew in it, but he didn't understand how people could be that way. And then he was in drugs, and he done LSD, he done this, done that. And for 20 something plus years, I watched him just be crippled. Mm. To the point that he didn't know how to cope. Okay. To the point where he thought the only way that he could do anything was to uh, self-medicate himself. And he would do more and do more. And then he wanted friends. So what he started doing was self-medicating with friends by being the one that sold more products so he could have more people around and all this and that. But then one day when everything went crashing and he had the product, he realized that what he was self-medicating himself with was nothing because no one was there. Mm. And everything went downhill. I'm that kid. That's me. That's my story. At 10, people that you should respect having you do things or record it with other kids. And even if you go tell them your parents and everyone else, no one believes because what title they have or who they are. So you kind of get told to justify. Mm -hmm. And then that luggage and baggage turned to me being crippled to me wanting to be more active in other ears because I thought it was justifiable. Mm. To the drugs that some of my family were pastors, but the other family were drug dealers, but they were there on Sunday. Mm. I didn't see how it was different, how it was wrong. To the point that when I was a kid, Brandon can tell you when I was a kid, people would call me Reverend Reb and 
preacher, preacher, and all kinds of stuff. To the point where what they would say would handicap me so bad that I'd just hit you for a ball back if you called me Ravy Ray. So I've been a form of this cripple, hunkered over, just trying to cope. Maybe not physically, but mentally and spiritually, I've been there. Mm -hmm. and if you're going to be honest with me tonight, there's a number of us that's been there. Been on what we can do. But the cool thing is, is God always has the prescription. Yep. Can I show you something that's really cool? Mm -hmm. I want you to get this, and I, I hope this helps you. This is done wonders for me, okay? Can I point it out? Yeah. Jesus saw her. Now think about this. This is awesome. The, I, I, I'm, I'm right, I want to write a book called The Unknown Names. The Unnamed. I can't pick a good title of it. But some of the best stories you never find out who the person was. Right. 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 You don't know who she is. Mm. But Jesus does it. He calls her. Right? It says it. He calls her. Now check this out. He called her where? To him. He didn't call her to go away where she couldn't be seen. He didn't want to do it, you know, put, you know, secretly where no one could be there. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Suzanne, making up a name, don't get all excited. Suzanne, turn. Can you see her? You call my name? You know me? Everyone else is calling her, making fun of her. She's this one. Just like everyone else looks at some of us that's coming from the streets and does something. Hey, Addy! Hey, no good! Hey, liar! Hey, cheater! But Jesus is calling her about Susan, come here! You know my name? Yeah, come here! Can you imagine her? She's not actually even coming to be healed. She's just coming because he called her by name. Yeah, that's good. Hey, so come here! Me? Yeah! And he didn't get frustrated that it took too long. He just waited on her. He called her to come to me. That's good. And that's what he's doing tonight. He's like, come to me. I don't care how creepy you are. I don't care how addicted you are. I don't care what you're going through, how depressed, how much anxiety. I don't care how much society's beat you up and your mind's making you crippled, that you can't even raise your hands to abortion, that you don't even really believe. I, mean, I don't care that you can't straighten up. Hey, Susan, come to me. Oh. Here's the beautiful part. This is what's so awesome. He says something here that's this mind blowing. Mm. And most of us miss it. Woman! Come on now. You are loose from your affirmative. You're going to say, what's so mind blowing about that? He didn't call her by name. That means he wasn't actually directly talking to her. He was talking to the problem on the inside. Yeah. Ooh! You are loose. Come on. So the power went towards who she was when humans say all the time, you are a cripple, you're a drug addict, you're no good, you'll never make it. Jesus is like, no, woman, you're loose. In other words, you're loose from your addiction, you're loose from you. Yes. You're loose to what God's doing to you right now that you don't understand. He is talking to what's been holding you back. He is talking to what's been holding you down. Yeah. So everyone say loose. Loose. So, hey, Jordan, get up here. Your family's not going to hurt me. Come on. So in other words, and I don't know where Jordan got this is, you know, you what's know God's study. I got the worst temper out of all the absences. Right? This is my nephew. But all my cousins and my brother and him, what, six, three, four, four? God knew if I had some hot. <laughs> I'd really be in trouble. Listen, I'm telling you. But see this? This is what's been holding you up. <coughs> so this is how it starts. What's entangled you and what's crippled you, you're just holding on to it first. Yeah. It don't look like nothing. Yeah. That's good. For you, you're just hanging on to the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's no big deal. But what happens, you ready? What happens is without you realizing it, Spiritually, all of a sudden, something came around and it made a lasso. Yeah. Mm. And see, we teach that it happens all at once. And don't. No, it 
Come on. The Bible says that we are creatures of habit. Yeah. yeah. Scientists have proved that habit has to come 27 times in a row. Yep. So that means you, you just, it wasn't like you've been told, oh, one time. No, 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 no. It was that 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th time, and then all of a sudden you forgot how many times you've been that way. Mm -hmm. So now if you look at it, he can still let go of it at any time, and it would fall off because it ain't a hat. Oh. It was something that was there. But the problem is, if something makes us feel good, yeah. Come on. If something fills that void. Uh huh. Been, we'll hang on to it, yes. no matter the cost. Yes. Oh. So what happens? He hangs on to it, and the next thing you know, it made another lap. Yeah. Right. Now the problem is now, it's gotten better. Mm. Mm. Come on. But you notice he lets go of the end, but it's wrapped around his heart. Yes. Yeah. Oh. He dropped what got him there, but now he's got a taste for it. Yes. Wow. Right? And look, it's wrapped good enough now that it can't just fall off by chance. Oh, come on now. So now he's getting looped and he's getting bound up, right? Mm. So next thing you know, it happens again, but now it's getting more. <coughs> well, maybe it's going over. Come on. And he's getting all humpty back. You know, you're taller than my rules, right? <laughs> so now he's got him humpy back and he's all, but, but look, he ain't got hold of the end no more because he, he don't want it sometimes. He wishes he wasn't that way. He don't know why he can't drop it. Mm. He can't drop it because it's wrapped around him. Yeah, he can quit for a week or two or a day or two or three or four months, maybe even a year, but sooner or later it comes back around because the problem ain't really physical. It's what's happened to you mentally. That's good. It's what happened to your addiction, your flavor, your touch, your taste. That's good. This is good. And then sooner or later, yeah. it wraps you up where you can't cope. Oh. Can I teach? This is good. Your spouse didn't want to love you, and you want them to love you, but you can't hug them because you're in love and wrapped up with something else. Yeah. Oh! That's good. Right? He wants to reach out, but he can't have it. Oh, come on! He wants help, but he can't receive it. Yeah. That's good. Because he's bound by the infirmity, which is the spirit. Yeah. Mm hmm. So the cool thing is, right here, Jesus sees her. Right? Hey, George, come here. Now watch. He makes her walk in that state. Yeah. That's the right. Thing is, that's building confidence. Yes. Why? Because he knows her by name, and he said, hey, come to me. Mm. So that's the first sign of faith on his part. Yes. Don't look like much, does it? No. Size of a mustard seed. Right. That's good. He ain't asked for nothing. He just was obedient. There was yeah. obedient. obedient. The key to being a Christian is obedience. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then she gets there, or Jordan gets here, right? Now, he don't say, hey, Jordan, don't get me wrong, can I let this claim her right here since we're on TV? <laughs> John 3, 17 is the most powerful verse. Yep. For God sent not his son to condemn, condemn the world, but through him it might be saved. In other words, you have free will, it's up to you if you want it. Yep. But the main thing I want to highlight is they don't condemn. So Jesus didn't say this to her. Hey, you crippled. That done that one thing that made your body ache and no good. Oh. Yeah. Come on. He didn't do that. Right. So in other words, he didn't go, hey, Jordan. He graduated from breaking bonds. Plus, he's family. Don't take it personal. Hey, Jordan. Oh, I have a hot, no good fight. I drop a hat. Just because you're an Adams, we both have it. But anyway. All right? <laughs> I'm being serious. He didn't do that. In fact, he don't even call her by name. Woman. He's calling the being that he created. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Not the title the man gave. Oh, yes. Wow. The problem is you've been going by the title that's been labeled by you by your actions. And God says that. Man might have given you that name. Might have given you that nickname. Might have given you that title. But that ain't what I called you. You're the apple of my eye. You're yep. made in my image. Awesome. Right? So he looks and he goes, of course, woman, we're talking to him. Hey, man. Now think about that. He's speaking to a creation. Yeah. Oh! He said, I made you. 
Yes. So then he said, it's awesome, right? Right? You, man, you are loose to hold up. If he was talking to him direct, it would be, stop picking it up and no, stop drinking, stop all the bar. But he didn't. He said, you are loose, meaning something else has had him wrapped up. <laughs> oh! So as much as you all think you're failures, you're not a failure. Yeah. Something else has had you wrapped up. Yeah. Something that you couldn't control. Come on. Something that hides you down that you couldn't handle. You thought you let go of it, but it had a grip on you. That don't mean you're a loser. That don't mean you're yeah. no good. That don't mean you can't make yeah. it. Yeah. No, 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 no. That means that God says, I got a prescription. Let me just talk to the source. Hey, you are loose. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. He speaks to what kept her bound. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. That's where we mess up as a church. Yeah. We want to pray the symptoms away, but when we going to realize that we can speak to the source. That's right. Yes. Woo! Yes. That's incredible. That's the most powerful two verses in Pastor Brian's opinion that you'll ever read come from where we come from. Mm. You are loosed. I know PG Jakes made some money on it because he tied it to women. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, he did. <laughs> but it's for everybody. Right. Everybody, that's right. You prove it? Woman. Means he's talking to creation. Means he's talking to what he made. Yes. He's no respecter of persons. Of persons. Right. right. So let me tell you what I'm trying to get at. If you can understand you're the person, the problem is what's been wrapped around you. Uh huh. And God's prescription is stop talking to the side effects. And in the name of Jesus, you are loose. Yes. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. Total game change. You want proof? Yeah. If you keep reading on this, you'll find out she went from being crippled to all of a sudden things started to work. This is how I'm saying it. Things started to work itself out. Oh, that's good. Can I really break it down? I like breaking it down. Yeah. Break it down. You've been crippled being over for 18 years. Your muscles don't know how to straighten. <laughs> oh! You can't tell me God ain't powerful if he straightened something that you've never been straightened for 18 years. How did they get the strength to straighten all of a sudden? How did it? Come on, come on. How this did is they that probably were knotted up, grew wrong, got to the side? How did they know where to go back, how to get back to straighten, how to straighten up? How did her muscle memory come back? Woo! How did she have strength to come up? How did she know how to raise her hands? How did she know how to... Are you understanding? Come on. Some of you are trying to figure out how you're going to do the problem, but when you use Jesus as your prescription, he'll just straighten you up you want to know how to get it. It just happens. Mm -hmm. Woo! So as much as you're trying to make it happen, stop. Right. Allow God to let it happen. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's good stuff. Yes. Yes. So if we look at what we're saying, we're saying, hey, the problem is whatever's got. It ain't the side effects. That's good. You Come got on. Anger problem? Side effects anger. There's a spirit that's causing it. Yep. Come on. Oh, come on. Yes. Oh, come on. I do a lot of canceling that no one knows about. Right? That's how that works. Right? A lot of guys like us. You hear me? Yeah, hear right? And they have sexual problems. Yeah. They can't stop watching something. Root of the problem. When they find out about that, when we get to talking, that comes from the side effect of doing that. Yeah. Okay, perform so they watch. Mm. And then when we get to talking about the method, we get down to another problem. And then by the end of it, we're down to the root. Come on. Everybody, you know, I know the root. We pray against the root in the name of Jesus, and they're done. What I'm getting at is some of us are praying for a side effect. Y'all with me? Oh, God. Yeah, God. this is good. Is that too touchy? A little too close? Uh, when we rub some salt in? <laughs> yeah, come on, that's, that's the number one thing with that. I study this, I do it all the time. Not that, I help you all the time. <laughs> so, that was a thing. I know. Right? <laughs> But there's side, side effects. People that drink usually argue more. That's the side effect. Yeah. I was saying, how about it? He a good, he a good drinker when he drinks two beers. But when he gets number four, or he gets some of that whiskey, he mean. No, no, listen, honey. It ain't got to do with anger. 
It has to do with that spirit that's on. Yep. Yeah. It has to do with what's wrapped in. Come on, that makes sense? Yeah. Huh? So in other words, we gotta get to the problem. So let's talk about the problem. Her problem existed for 18 years. Mm. Now, can we talk about this? This is gonna hit home. This is how we're gonna end. She had a physical problem, right? Yeah. Walk back to me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The physical problem wasn't nothing compared to her mental problem. Right. Oh, Ooh. Being wow. physical this way, that's one thing to think about what her mind said. I used to be pretty, and now she's like me, and now it's ugly and crippled, and I don't understand why. I just don't get it. I'm like, can I not straighten up? When God mad at me, why I can't straighten up? And look at Billy. Billy used to like me and sneak over all the time. Now, Billy wouldn't even look at me. God, Billy. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. The mental part yep. is worse than her physical part. Woo! Wow. I know when no one likes me, I'll never be murdered, I'll never be able to do nothing. I won't be able to have kids. You won't have kids with me. Mm. I can't even run to the store. What's wrong with me? What did God do to me this way? Come on, don't act like you ain't been of God. Come on! Think about the middle part. <coughs> Crippled Ben on, go to the bathroom, probably ain't clean like she needs to be clean. Them days and eight, there wasn't no health clear service to help her out. Mm. If anything, she'd been close to being former leprosy, she'd been allowed into town. That don't mean no one's helping her. Right. Because back then they thought God struck her down to something. Mm. Oh. Middle part. Yeah. At night, man, they're trying. I just wish I could straighten out. I can't straighten out. Mm. Middle. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. How many of you have been getting made up in the middle part? Yeah. You're never going to make it. God can't do nothing. Come on. But God had a prescription. Yeah. That only not took care of the physical, but it took care of the mental. Yes. Oh, come on, church. It took care of everything. Jesus is the key to take care of everything. You with me? Absolutely. That's so cool. You like that? That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, everything happens. Everything changes. Everything changes. So I want to recap real quick. You ready? Yeah. We just read that she tried to fix herself over and over. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Scripture says she could in no wise lift herself up. That applies. That applies. That she's used many different things to try to get a healing. Right. Only one thing can heal you. Listen, I know some of us are in here because of where we are, breaking bones and what we're going through. Listen, that's great. That's great. It ain't going to heal you. Only Jesus can. Right. You can go through the emotions, learn the steps. And we're teaching you about Jesus. We are. That's our main goal. Only reason I signed up for it was this is the best one about shoving Jesus on you. Yep. Right? Come on. You can go to all these classes. But until you allow Jesus to take over, you'll just let go of it and still be bound. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yep. This is good. Don't change. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about that. Think about that. Can we talk about something else? Think about how she lost her power. She didn't have no power in her mind or her belief in herself because she was beat up. How many of you don't have no confidence in yourself because of what you're going through? Mm. Come on, that's just being honest. Yeah. But God, with one prescription. One prescription. Everything's fine. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. This is so awesome. So here we go. This is the end. <laughs> We gotta get to the spot in our handicap. So let's call it that. No, I'll get in trouble. We gotta get to the spot in our disability. You hear me? Yeah. That's all it is, man. This is a disability. That's right. That's all it is. Ain't nothing too big for God, right? Right. No, right. <laughs> we gotta get to the spot in our disability that's kept us down for years. Mm -hmm. Come on, right? Right. Some of you still listen. Some of you still don't have unforgiveness. Oh. Something's happened to Matt. You don't know how bad it was. No, I don't. But you got to forgive again, no man. Yes. Come on. Right. Yeah. Come on. Then you want to know why no one forgives you? You ain't forgive someone else. Right. You want to know why you can't move on and do this and why you keep popping yeah. up? Because you, if this happened yeah. to you, you can almost guarantee you're doing it to somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we can get to the spot where we understand that God has a prescription, prescription, we don't have to go through that no more. Yeah. Let's call it something else. 
when we have disappointment or maybe a depression. Yeah. Right? When we get to the spot where we realize, I'm tired of being this way. Hello. And we start addressing the root of the problem. Right. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. Can I give you one? Go ahead. You want a real life person one? Me. Maybe three years ago, I never told no one besides my dad. And then after my dad and my uh, elders shot it down, I never told no one, it's not even Carmen, about what they were making us do from the ages of the 10 to 11. Because no one believed me. My dad was pastor. He knew. I told him, no, Brian, Who else? Okay, I'm, I'm describing stuff to a T. We live in the middle of nowhere. Only got three TV stations. Ain't none of them Cinemax, XBO. How is a 10 year old describing stuff that only a married couple would know about? Mm. And he's like, oh. <coughs> it off. I've had breakthroughs in my life. Been doing good. And I need to have breakthrough from my addiction. Right? Yeah. But deep down, something's still on the inside of me. Went right. So once, man, I'll, I'll be honest, man, for a pop, probably over here, I was praying over it. Oh, this, this eats me up. And I was like, what's the screw root of this? Where did this really start from? Did it really start from my brother giving me this? Where did this really start from? And I started looking at the timeline. I started getting high at 10, and that's when that started. <coughs> and I stopped talking to dad, started hanging more out with my brother at 10, because my dad didn't believe me. I stopped wanting to do anything with church at that age, because they knew no one stopped it. Mm. Wow. So it progressed. So I realized that a lot of my problem, where everyone thought I was doing to get attention, I just told that a whole lot, but it didn't happen. What it was doing was, I felt dirty and used for what happened to me at 10, and no one believed me, so I didn't know how to handle my emotions, so I was covering it up with whatever I could get my hands on. Mm. So I didn't have to steal it from my brother, he would have just gave it to me. Mm. And then when we can cover it up, and I got a little older being a teenage boy, when we all know, I justified it. But I was really just hiding it under layers of layers and layers of abuse, drug abuse. Alcohol didn't do much for me. But when you're 11 years old and you're doing math, by the time you're 13, you're sticking a needle in your arm. What do you think? Wow. And I can look back now, at my age, and when I realized that was the root, and that was the root, not only how I felt, that was the root of the problem I had towards women, I'm going to be way honest. Don't you be looking at me like that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because that man that my dad knew, and then they were even, they were, some of them were his own kids. Being serious. And I realized, oh man, not only my addiction from that, but my way I look at women and how I feel, the hatred. And then how I feel about authority, dad, not believing, not trusting. Man, when that hit me, Got to pray over. Yeah. And once one day, man, we got to preach about it. I said, no one's ever known about this, but I'm telling you now, my stuff changed. Good. Mm -hmm. Am I mad at for that? No, I have to forgive him. Mm -hmm. What dad really wants to believe his kids do something like that? <coughs> he probably didn't know how to handle it. Oh, well, come on, my bad. Mm -hmm. I'd be when I was younger. Probably we didn't get along a lot, you know me. But looking back, how would I handle it? Mm -hmm. Oh, now, are you sure? Oh. And it all came from one group. So for years, I'd be in church, do good, and then I'd fall out. But the church and me would always pray for my addiction. Oh. And I couldn't stay in. 
And I told pastor after pastor, hey, there's, I know we're praying for addiction, and I can't really say I'm having a craving for it, but something ain't right here. I just, and you know what they tell me? Oh, it's because you got a hunger for it. Well, I didn't have a hunger for it until you just spoke it. Mm. Because you speak life and you speak death. Yeah. Mm. So they keep telling me it's because you're that, you're just this, you're just that. Well, by the sake of time, I'm like, well, so I'll never get over it. And I had one tell me, you've always been at it. Mm. Wow. But when Jesus called him to heal, and he said, let it loose. Let him loose. It got back down to what happened as a child. And what we've been praying over for years was this what the devil used to cover up. My real hurt. Oh, yeah. mm. That filled my anger. That filled my violence. All you guys don't even understand. It filled some serious violence. Some serious anger. And I did not, even as a pastor, can say I was totally free, never raised up, and then, then, but I, I feel that something was never complete. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's because I was never fighting the root. Yeah. And after I brought that forth, the things that I could never stop stopped on their own. Yeah. Because God removed the root of the tree. And when you remove the root, it can't grow. When I was a kid, we had to go back to the farm. We had no choice. I had to go back to the farm. in Missouri. And it's right before California took all the milk cows. And we were having a hard time keeping the milkworms going. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, this thing came that was it grew to be five foot tall and it had a big purple flower on it. It's called a thistle. And for some reason, they made it where, hey, you can't have the thistles out there if you're cows. Now, that don't do nothing to the milk. That don't. But it was a way for, uh, for them to start regulating the farms. So, man, Grandpa and them and Uncle Bobby spray it, spray it, spray it, in the middle. But then he'd come back within a week. Sometimes it would even come back stronger. And sometimes the same spray we used twice wouldn't touch it the third time because it got immune to it. All right. Right? So I remember Uncle Bobby and them were panicking. What are we going to do with all these thistles? Man, it's getting in the hay fields, getting in our hay. What are we going to do with it? We've been spraying, we've been doing everything. It won't work. No. So all of a sudden, Grandpa, my Grandpa goes, Only thing we got left to do, boys, take it up by the root. Right. Mm. And I'll never forget that conversation. We're going to take, there's hundreds of them. We're going to take them up by the root. What else you want to do? Nothing else is working. We sprayed it, we medicated it, we've done everything we can. It ain't working. I promise you one thing, boys. We take it up to the roof. How can it grow? I'll never forget that conversation because you know my grandpa Tom is probably where some of my attitude comes up. I don't know if you think it's going to grow, Steve. How else? <laughs> my, my dad is Steve. Steve, what do you think? Work! And they're like, all right. So we went and got these long metal, kind of like a seasonal things that in the Bible they call them Oxford. It has a chisel on the end. And they made every one of us go out there. We didn't get a choice. And went out there and he shoved it. Right? Underneath it. Mm -hmm. And you pull it up. The roots would come up. You grab it because it had thorns. You grab it and we throw it. And then we burn it. But guess what happened? Then it never came back. Right. You wonder why? Got rid of the root. Got rid of the root. Yep. So as you stand, let me ask you one question. Go ahead and stand. Are you just medicating the side of the face? Okay. Or are you ready to get rid of the root of the real problem? Hi everyone, I'm Corbin Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters, and host of Rest of the Excel. We'll say a special thank you for listening to Amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you join us live here at Resonate Church, whether you're joining us nationwide courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you join us internationally and globally courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for Resonate Jesus with us. Now, you ask it, and you say, corporate, you know, Resonate. Now, you guys always bless us 
But we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Like, yes, we are. Multiple ways, four of them in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location. 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights at 6.30 and we do keep in mind, things schedule subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little timely thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right, everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR if you want to resonate your giving online. Just follow the directions and you can do that safely and securely. Option three, the cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resonate you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail it. You wanna mail your contribution to us, courtesy of a check or money order? Please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option. Send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church and send it to that address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, show love, your peace. What up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Woo. Man, it just came out of rest tonight, man. <laughs> you know it's all good, man. Woo. Son of us talking about it. Hey, why don't you come join us? Sundays, 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo! Sunday night's scheduled to change. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30. It's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun. So can you! Our church is a great family church. And your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love. Give peace. Resonate, Resonate Jesus. Jesus. Wow. A story that ends up getting dissected mm. to really show you the solution to everything to being God and it, and it never hey pastor never look, really really looked at that story like that before being honest here pastor that was awesome mm. I know for a fact I'm gonna be redoing a whole lot of study on that. that that's, that's pretty darn awesome. Thank you very much, and like I said, our prayers and big time are with you. Um, God's got you, and you know, we love you, big time. Thanks, Pastor. We are human beings. We are people, individually, person, collectively created for God. You know, we just have a math problem. And of course, in some instances, we still do have that math, uh, math equation, spiritual math equation, known as God's purpose for your life, plus his power equals your potential. Tonight's three P's, as you, if you've been taking notes on this, tonight's three P's were the person, the problem, and the prescription. The person being us. We're human beings and we're created in the likeness of God. Two. 
you is the one subject that we hate to deal with. Problem. If we're really honest with ourselves, especially if you took notes on tonight's broadcast, we're really honest with ourselves. Problem. And I really hope every single church is watching this broadcast. Because a lot of times, we put the blame on others. If we're really honest with ourselves. We blame others for our problems. We blame, <clears throat> yeah, this is gonna hurt. The skull touch the folks. We blame generational curses. If you learn tonight, there was no generational curse that was blamed on this. Meaning, there was no power given to something that was already dead. That Jesus already conquered. I think it's about time we need to quit putting. And this is this is a problem that we all need to solve right here. Especially as of right now. We need to quit putting the problem on others. And we need to quit reservating the generational curses that were already destroyed. Maybe those problems are us. If we're really honest with ourselves, we need to look at ourselves really, really hard in the mirror and say, hey. I, I should admit, I'm the problem. It took me many years to figure that out. But when you figure out a problem, then you end up landing at the prescription for that problem. See, we all have problems, but for every problem, there's a prescription. Yep, you heard me right. For every problem, there's a prescription. Maybe we need to ask ourselves this question. And I'm not talking about physical ailments, and we're not making fun or anything as far as physical ailments and all of that to discern, okay? So get that notion out of your head. We're talking mentally and spiritually. Now sometimes, when we're physically and mentally crippled, we're spiritually and mentally handicapped. Sometimes it can put us in a physical handicap too. So ask yourself, are you crippled spiritually? Do you have something in your life that's literally making you bowl over to where bottom line you can't stand straight? Or you can't operate normally. If you really think about it, sometimes, and I'm not gonna even say sometimes, but literally all the time, God's given us a prescription. And it's more than just Him. It's the one prescription that all of us fail to ignore. And that's renewing of your mind. That's when you, that's when that prescription kicks in. The Bible said med meditate on him day and night. I think it's about time we, I said we, we start. Clicking into the prescription. Love being part of the three man characters. God created us the person. Every person has a problem. And for every problem, there is a prescription. And the prescription is God. The prescription is Jesus. The prescription is the Holy Spirit.
I think it's safe to say. They were reckon that we are the issue. We know we're the problem because our mouth's not renewed. And we're, prescri we're persuaded that there is a prescription that will now take care of every single problem. But it all starts renewing of that. And you're realizing and admitting you have a problem. And further admitting that's their end taking the prescription that's specifically made for the problem. Hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. Oh, help. Because by realizing the person, the problem, and the solution, not looking at others, but looking at yourselves. It'll help you to have the prescription of Jesus, resonating Jesus, to any and everyone around you and around the world. God, thank you so much for resonating yourself to us. Thank you and hope for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a live resonating service because a live resonating service don't stop. Watch you be left out. Join us live resonating church if on the screen. Plus, four ways to resonate your worship through giving. Resonate church, showthrow.com is your option. Please take advantage of it, will ya? And all pictures, news, scoops, views, info, so much more. Facebook.com forward slash Resonate Church Shows. And if you're watching this program on the YouTube Soundcast, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, then ring that bell, ding, ding, ding. That way you ain't missing anything. Woo -woo! We're back at our regular time next week. Make sure you join us. Big time shout out to Christina. Love you, girl. You're my, you're my sweetheart. Mm -mm. I know you're watching. And trust me, you and I have a whole lot to discuss, sweetheart. As far as uh, this program goes, I, I think it'll be a great Bible study for both of us. Love you, girl. Folks, we are right back here next week, back at our regular time at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, right here, same time, same place, here on this same station. And until then, for everyone at Resident Church and for everyone at Syndicated Media Television Partners Group, I'm Corver and Chris Heineken. We say to you, show love, give peace, you know it. Resonate Jesus. Folks, we're back at our regular time next week. Make sure you join us. Until then, happy 4th, everybody. Good night, Canada. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. We will see you next Thursday night. Neither death nor grave. Stop, I got you. Stop, I got you. No sin, you see no boy.